Hello and welcome to this video on evidence and investigation. Today we'll examine the question, what types of evidence indicate human or animal activity in an area? But before we begin, let's review our learning and language goals. Our learning goals are, I can make hypotheses and relate evidence to my hypotheses, and I can record observations. Our language goals are, I can talk about this topic using words like evidence, inference, hypothesis, and observation. What do we mean when we talk about evidence and investigation? Well, these words are usually used in the context of a crime or a crime scene. And when a crime is committed, a team of investigators will visit the crime scene and look for evidence from that location. Evidence at a crime scene is something that we can see that gives us information about the crime and who may have committed it. Before we go too much further, let's review some key vocabulary. An investigation is the process of studying something carefully to determine the facts about it. In the context of a criminal investigation, the investigation is what detectives will do to look for evidence. When detectives investigate, they apply scientific methods to search for evidence or facts that can help solve a crime. Evidence is the set of facts signs, and other information that prove or support an idea about a situation. When we use our background knowledge and clues to come to a logical conclusion about a situation, that is called making an inference. Inferences can lead us to make a hypothesis by using our background knowledge to make an educated guess or provide an explanation for something that can be tested. And that is the really, really important part. A hypothesis must be able to be tested. We have to be able to prove or disprove the hypothesis based on the evidence. Now, what are some of the types of evidence that police can gather from an investigation? Well, they can use footprints. Footprints can tell investigators a lot about a potential suspect. They can determine how fast and in which direction a person was traveling. What else do you think investigators might be able to tell from looking at footprints? Investigators also look for fingerprints. Criminals may leave fingerprints at the scene of a crime and investigators can match unique fingerprints from the crime scene to the unique fingerprints of a potential suspect. Handwriting. Investigators can analyze handwriting from a crime scene to match it to the handwriting of a suspect. And fabrics. A criminal sometimes leaves things behind at a crime scene. For example, in a violent crime, clothing may become ripped or torn in the struggle and fibers can be left behind or even larger pieces of fabric can be left behind. Investigators can analyze and compare fabrics from a crime scene to items of clothing that the suspect may own or may have worn. And DNA. Criminals often leave DNA at the scene of the crime. DNA can come in the form of sweat, skin, blood, hair, saliva, mucus, and forensic scientists can match the unique DNA of a suspect to the unique DNA found at a crime scene. All right, we are now going to take a moment to look at some photos and try and determine what might have happened based on evidence of activity that we can see in these photographs. And as you look at each photo, start by asking yourself, what happened here? What evidence is there of activity? And what kind of activity? Was the activity recent? And most of all, how do I know? So that's where you're gonna look for specific clues that you can use to back up your inference about what's happening in each photo. Ready? Okay, take a close look at this photo. What happened here and what might have caused it? Take a moment to think about that. When we look carefully at this photograph, we can see shoe prints and bicycle tires. And that tells us that humans were here. 
in the context of my everyday life, walking out in my neighborhood, if I see this, my inference is going to be somebody rode a bike through here and somebody else was walking. And probably several different people were walking since the shoe prints are different. All right, what do we see in this picture and what might have caused it? Take a second to have a close look and think about it. All right, this is called scat. And that's the scientific word for animal poop. Scat is a really common form of evidence of animal activity. What are some other signs of animal activity in an area that you can think of? Other types of animal activity that we might find on the ground could be fur like this or possibly feathers. We may see animal tracks or footprints made by animals in mud or in dirt on a trail. We may also find evidence of animal homes like nests or burrows. Those are little holes that animals dig in the ground that they live in. Um, maybe you would even see a beaver dam in some places. That is very clear evidence of animal activity in that area. And speaking of beaver dams, if there are beavers in your area, you may see evidence of their activity when you see trees that they've chewed on or even that they've chewed down and you just see the stump that has been chewed by the beaver. Those are all possible signs of animal activity in an area. Okay, take a close look at this photo. And then what I want you to do is to list the types of activity that are present in this photo and how you know. So you're going to tell me whether you see evidence of human activity or animal activity and what clues are there to back up that inference. Okay, here's another photograph to look at and ask ourselves, what do we see here? What might have caused this? This one's pretty obvious. It's evidence of human activity because we are seeing litter. But what else might we be able to tell about the humans who left this litter? Take a close look and think about it for a moment. Let's take a closer look at the litter and see if you can make an inference about the person who left this litter in the park. Well, we have two key pieces of evidence that could lead us to infer that a child left this litter. Number one, this litter was found at a playground, which is a place that many children go to, and mostly children are at a playground. And number two, the litter is from a mini egg bag. That's a kind of candy wrapper, and candy is a treat that is favored by children. So I think we have two pieces of pretty decent evidence that a child may have left this litter here. It's not a for sure guarantee, of course, Adults can be in playgrounds because they may be taking their child to the playground. And adults like candy too. So it is possible, of course, that an adult left this. But we do have two clues that could lead us to the inference that a child left this litter. Okay, last photo of the day. What do you see here and what might have caused it? This is a trail that has evidence of both human and animal activity. We're going to take a closer look at it. Okay, now we're zoomed in and we can see lots of evidence of human activity. We have some older prints here and we can see these prints are a little more worn. They're less clear. It looks like some sand has been kind of scuffed over um, this particular print and many of the other prints that we see in this image. But we also see evidence of more recent activity here with these much clearer um, and cleaner footprints. We also see prints that suggest animal activity. Now, which prints do you think are older, the human prints or the animal prints? And we're going to take a closer look to try and answer that question right now. Let's take a really careful look right inside this oval here, this red oval. Do you notice that one set of prints inside this oval looks like it appears to be on top of the other set? What might that tell you about the order that they're made in? And how can that help you determine who was here first, who was here last? We can see if we look really carefully that there's a human footprint, a shoe print, and then there's some animal prints on top of that shoe print. And that tells us that the animal came after the human because the animal walked on top of the human shoe print. 
That's it for now, but this is not over. This week, we're going to continue to look at what we can learn by analyzing animal tracks and human footprints.